Okay, so this is lecture three. That is, we are going to wrap up KVL and we'll do an introduction. Whoops. Oh, man. I could have just struck it out under an introduction to two terminal circuit elements. Okay, so recall, oops, recall that we stopped at Kirchhoff's current law. We defined Gaussian surfaces and basically the algebraic sum of currents at a Gaussian surface or at a node is zero. Now, for with respect to KVL or Kirchhoff's voltage law, we will use the concept of a ground node or a reference node that we uh, defined in the previous lecture. So recall our circuit. Right. Three terminal. Actually, I should draw this bigger because we're going to be marking all over it. Whoops. So we picked, I believe it was node E anyway. Let's just label the nodes. So you have node, I'm going to label it as 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. So basically, Kirchhoff's voltage law says that we, first of all, we define, uh, excuse me, so the first thing we do is we define a voltage difference between node K and J. So VKJ is defined as EK minus EJ, all right? So then we need to pick a ground node, like I said, let's just pick that node. Therefore, V12 is E1 minus E2. V23 is, so in other words, V12 means if you have a multimeter, a device that measures voltage, you stick the positive end of the multimeter at one and the negative terminal of the multimeter at two. So V2 minus V3, so this is defined as defined as E2 minus E3, uh, V3 minus V, oops, oh man, I messed this up, sorry. Do that, do this again. So V1, 2, V2, 3, there you go, is defined as E2 minus E3, V3, 4 is defined as E3 minus E4, and V, four, one is defined as E4 minus E1. Notice that V1 to 2 plus so V1 2 plus V2 3 plus V3 4 plus V4 1 
equals e1 minus e2 plus e2 minus e3 plus e3 minus e4 plus e4 minus e1 which is equal to essentially so this can these all cancel to zero in other words we are going around a loop which is a closed node sequence. Recall from last lecture, a loop is a closed node sequence that has only two terminal circuit elements. Um, so the algebraic sum of voltages around a closed node sequence is zero. That's another statement of Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now, basically, this discussion of KCL in the previous lecture and KVL in this lecture suggests that the laws of interconnection are independent of the actual circuit elements in the circuit. So KCL and KVL suggest that the laws of interconnection are independent of circuit elements, which implies that we can generalize a circuit to a network by defining or using a die graph or directed graph. So we first need this definition. That is, if you have a two terminal circuit element, we'll cover multi terminal circuit elements in the next chapter. I know the circuit we just discussed has a three terminal circuit element, but as you will shortly see, it is not difficult to draw the die graph of a multi-terminal circuit element. So if it's V1, I1, I can do this, I can represent this this way. So there's node 1, beta 1, node 2. So in other words, a digraph consists of a set of nodes. So a graph consists of a set of nodes and branches, beta, where in our case the nodes are 1, 2, and beta is simply a single branch of beta 1. Okay. So going back to our circuit, so our circuit uh, above can be represented by the following digraph. Or I won't say digraph by a well, a network. Okay. So basically, you have node one, node two. Is that what I used? Yes. So between node one and node two, I have an element. So we'll join that. It's branch one. Okay. And node two and node three, we essentially have a three terminal elements. So again, we'll discuss digraphs of multi-terminal elements in chapter two. So that's, there's an element there, beta four. There's an element there, call that beta five. And there's an element there, let's call that beta 6 and let's put our ground node in there okay so what we can do is we can use the digraph to oops I have no idea what happened there so we can use the digraph to obtain KCL and KVL equations and we will see that we used to obtain KCL KVL equations and we will see that the digraph is an especially powerful um, 
approach because it emphasizes the topology of the circuit and it beautifully shows the applications of some very powerful theorems such as intelligence theorem i i have discussed intelligence theorem in this chapter uh, so i won't discuss it in this lecture i recommend that you read through, i mean you should be reading through the book and uh, understand get an idea of how powerful this theorem is we'll re- we'll use thevenin's theorem uh, not thevenin i'm sorry i mean we will use thevenin's theorem also but we will use intelligence theorem to prove some very general results in circuit theory later in the book uh but for now so based on this digraph kcl equation can be written as i1 plus i6 so this is at node 1 essentially equal 0 so at node 2 you have i1 so i1 is coming in negative i1 plus i2 is 0 at node 3 we have i3 plus i4 is 0 and at node 4 we have negative i4 plus i5 is 0 but what's interesting is writing this in matrix form uh so what we can do is i1 i2 i3 i4 i5 i6 so this is a 6 this is 6 by 1 matrix so what we need is a 4 by 1 matrix on the right hand side of zeros therefore this should be a 4 by 6 matrix and that's pretty easy to write out so yeah one contribution from i1 none from 2 3 4 5 6 and then you have minus 1 1 0 0 0 0 and then you have nothing from i1 nothing from i2 i3 i4 i5 i6 nothing from i1 nothing from i2 nothing from i3 negative 1 i4 1 1 i5 1 i6 so in matrix form this can be written as a and in the book I use boldface notation for a matrix. So here I'm using. Um, it's hard for me to write in bold on the tablet. So there'll be a bar over matrices and vectors. So essentially, I have that, and this is called as the incidence matrix. Now, with respect to KVL. So recall KVL. Uh, so V one is E one minus E two. So in other words, I will say V one. I won't write V one hyphen two is so. In other words, whoops, what I wanted to say was V one. This is associated. With branch beta one, okay. So since I have the branch beta one, I won't write v one hyphen two is e one minus e two, and then in that case v two is simply e two, v three is simply e three because this is the ground node. Oops. V three is simply e three, v four. Is e three minus e four, and you can check this. Actually, let's check it. V four is e three minus e four. Notice why it's e three minus e four, and not e four minus e three, because of the direction of beta, like the here, right here. Okay. Yeah. The passive sign convention. That's what it is. Hopefully, that's what you inferred when you looked at this picture. Okay, the passive sign convention. uh then let's see what else and then we have uh v4 is e v5 is simply e4 and v6 is simply e1 so v5 is simply e4 and v6 is simply e1 so we can also write this in matrix form as so basically what we need 
is we have E1, E2, E3, E4. So this is a four by one matrix. So in here I need V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. So I have a six by one matrix. So I need a six by four matrix here. So which is going to be, uh, we can just write it out. So it's one minus one, zero, zero. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. But now you should notice that, look at this. This matrix is essentially, if you zoom out, this matrix is essentially the transpose of the incidence matrix. So in other words, I can write this as A transpose E vector equals V vector, all right? So these are, I mean, these two results kind of um, hint at some general results in topology. And like I said, one of them is Telligence Theorem. Uh, and you should read that section in the book. Uh, but we will revisit topological concepts logical concepts in circuit theory throughout the book. Okay. So now it's time to talk about the circuit elements themselves. So this is essentially related to the idea of modeling. That is, we only um, take into account essential features that are required to explain the phenomenon of interest. So, and modeling, bottom line is, is more of an art, is an art, okay? And it takes a lot of experience to understand what is the, what are the essential factors. But in a gist, a model should capture reality despite its simplicity. So a model should be as simple as possible, excuse me. And in essence, we will, the entire, we'll basically characterize a two-terminal black box approach. There's, in other words, the box might have multiple terminals, uh, but only two of them, only two of a multi-terminal, as we will see in chapter two, or multi-terminal circuit elements, of a multi-terminal, only two of a multi-terminal are accessible To the outside world okay and the box is essentially black in the sense we really the only way to find out what's inside the box is if we open it up and we don't want to do that so in essence the key is to choose the correct circuit variables of interest and fundamentally there are as we know from the previous lectures there are four circuit variables there is voltage current and charge flux 
So in essence, we have and we know from the very first lecture that current is defined as the rate of flow of charge and voltage is defined as the rate of change of flux linkage. So in essence, we have four fundamental circuit elements. Nonlinear resistors that relate voltage to current, nonlinear capacitors that relate charge to voltage, nonlinear inductors that relate um, flux linkage to current, and nonlinear memristors that relate charge to voltage, charge to flux, sorry, charge to voltage is capacitor. So anyway, we will, next time, we will start with the discussion of the fundamental circuit elements. See you then.